All right, so this is so insanely important. It's, it's this time of year and I'm sure that your phone is ringing a lot and you, you can get overwhelmed. And I wanna talk about, I mean, this literally puts more money in your pocket and you retain your sanity. Uh, qualifying customers over the phone and w when your phone's ringing off the hook like I have 46 missed phone calls right now my voicemail inbox is full it just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing now we have a calling center that we forward to we have I have a, a secretary but I still have to return a lot of phone calls your job is to qualify customers over the phone and cross every T and dot every I before you decide to go to their property or agree to do their job because you're trying to see if they're a good fit because if they're not a good fit then everything else you do is in vain if they're not a good fit it doesn't matter if you take down all their info and go give them a quote or go agree to do a job or do the job if they're not a good fit, they're not a good fit. So that's the number one thing you need to find out immediately and as soon as possible so then you can pull all the other chips off the table and cut your losses quick and get to the next customer, get to the next phone call. This is a sorting and sifting process. This is a numbers game. I literally go through and I listen to customer messages as soon as I hear the customer talk, nope, that's not my customer, delete. Nope, it's not my customer, delete. Nope, it's not my customer, delete. Like, don't even call them back to say, oh, uh, hey, I listen to your voicemail and uh, yeah, we're not a good fit. No, they'll call somebody else. And if they call you back multiple times, hey, I've been calling multiple times, then pick up the phone and say, hey, uh, you're outside of my service area. Or we're booked out for 12 weeks. And then what will they say? You'll, you'll know it's not your customer. We're, but we can't even get to you for three months. This might even be a total white lie because you just don't want to, I mean, unless you want to, unless you want to learn more hard, painful lessons. Some customers, oh, you're booked out for three months. That's okay. Can you still come and give me a quote? Can you come and give me a free quote anyway so I can get a bunch of free knowledge and advice? I just want to know how much this thing would cost. I don't care about you or your time. And it's just human nature. They just don't care. The better you get at sorting and sifting through all the, you know, the bullshit that is not right for you and your business is the better you can get at cherry picking the jobs that are right for you. Because here's something my friend Stanley Genetic, the Dirt Monkey, what's up Dirt Monkey, he taught me. <sighs> I didn't understand what he was talking about at first. If you ever look at my leg is up in the videos, you're like, what's his leg? Because it's so comfy to just put my foot up like this. But it looks weird in the video. Like, what's is his leg up? What's going on? I put my foot down for you. Because that one video, a couple videos, my leg was up and my shorts were like this. I ain't gonna, you know. And you're like, well, what is this motherfucker? See, what's going on here? There, I put my leg down. It's so comfy to just put, I put my feet up on my dashboard. Anyways, so uh, Stan was talking about this. This is really dope. You only have so many spaces that you can fit work into this season. Then the season's over. What are you gonna put in those spaces? See, when you're new in the, in the landscaping business, as, as a contractor, you think you can squeeze it all. Oh, I'll fit it in. I'll do more. We'll take on more. We'll just work more. That's a bunch of bullshit. You can work more. You can burn yourself out too. But how many projects can you fit into the month of July? How many can you realistically fit? How many do you want to fit? What do you want to fit in those slots? It's like playing Jenga. You want it to be all gold bricks if you can help it. Because... This is why it's good to have your phone ringing off the hook, sorting and sifting and qualifying, finding out the right customers. It's like playing Tetris. You only want the right ones to go in those slots. So you feel good and you're making money on every project. And the only reason you wouldn't do that is if you were caught up in neediness, fear, desperation, and you were taking whatever you could get. I'm telling you, 
if you know how to market and advertise and keep your phone ringing get positive reviews and do email marketing and voicemail marketing and lead generation and follow up and create a lead generation and a referral machine and put door hangers and give every customer business cards and uh, follow up with them and do the multi-touch process send them brownies Google AdWords create YouTube videos for your business have a great website stuff like that man um, walk ups from neighbors collecting all customers contact info and just be a follow up machine if you know how to generate leads and you know that you always got three times in the amount of phone calls coming in than work you can even do well you should literally work your way up to the top 30% or even more top 10% yeah, it's like the 80-20 rule. And then how far do you need to be booked out? I think as long as you're always booked out, I don't know, two to three weeks, and your closing rate is always, you know, you close half the jobs you take on, maybe your prices are so high and you're so particular, you only close 20%. I don't know where you're at, but what I'm talking about is finding the sweet spot. When you can get in the sweet spot, you can see dramatically different things happen over time with your bottom line that make you like your business more, have fun at work, because you're doing the jobs you want to do. Sorry, it's, 90, it's like 92 degrees out. Uh, kind of a long day. Uh, you're doing the jobs that you want to do, and you're actually making money on these jobs. And then once you do that long enough, now you build an entire client base of clients where you're, you know, that know you and they know that you t you value your your worth. You have self worth, right? Like you you weed out all the low paying nitpicky clients that you don't want. You finally now you can actually start to do things, but it can take years to get to that point. So however soon you realize that. Like you have to reverse engineer it and look at your numbers and say, this is what I need to make to make this happen. And then keep comparing that with reality. What's going on in reality? Okay, is my reality real? Is it my imagined reality? Is it a, is it a reality that you're pro just projecting? Because I know some people that project a, a, a victim-minded poverty mentality where they can't make any money they can't get blah, blah, blah. and that's real and because I know other people that project abundance and that's what keeps showing up in their life right I know I've always been somewhere in the middle sometimes I'm like projecting lack and all this crap from my childhood of growing up poor and then other times I project abundance and I keep going back and forth that's my struggle it's like leaning more into the abundance side like you know and getting around successful people that think that way is very important too. But anyways, when you get on that phone, you're qualifying and sifting. You're talking to the customer, asking them a whole lot of questions to find out if you're a good fit. If you're not a good fit, get off that phone quick and get to the next customer. Sometimes you got to take whatever you can get, right? But it's if you can keep the leads flowing in to where you don't get into that position where you're stuck just taking whatever you can get. You always stay on top of the eight ball. You're always the one who's in control. You have a lot to choose from. That's all I gotta say. I gotta get back. I'm gonna turn this thing off. <laughs>